want to first uh, say that, of course, uh, part of our task at NASA is given to us by the Congress is uh, not only to do fundamental research in the skies and so forth, but as part of that also to find life elsewhere. Uh, that's why we've built astrobiology programs in many disciplines across the summary field that looks at uh, both uh, uh, extinct life uh, on Mars, for example, but also looks at uh, patterns of life elsewhere, uh, uh, perhaps uh, in Europe, uh, perhaps in Enceladus as we go forward, but also as we look at exoplanets, planets outside of our solar system, looking for the question whether certain environments are in fact uh, uh, part of uh, uh, kind of the, if you want, the ladder of life that uh, get, got us to uh, where we are. Uh, so the tools that we're using, whether it's in this field, they're also kind of in fields that then go towards kind of intelligent life, such as uh, techno signatures, which we have programs for already, are the same tools that we use everywhere, the tools that we're uh, frankly using here, and that is that we're commissioning a study uh, to start early in the fall to examine uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. The study will focus on identifying available data, how to best uh, collect future data, and how NASA can use these data to move the scientific understanding of UAPs forward. A short way I would talk about that is take a field that is relatively data poor uh, and to have, make it into a field that is much more data rich and therefore uh, worthy of scientific investigation and analysis. NASA's mission, of course, uh, as I just said, is to explore the unknown in air and space and we have access, frankly, as part of that, to a broad uh, range of observations uh, of Earth and space. And, and uh, frankly, that's the lifeblood of our scientific inquiry. We have uh, the tools and teams who can help us improve our understanding of the unknown. And we are prepared to use these powerful tools of scientific discovery, in this case, as much as anything else, using exactly the same kind of approach that we always use. On identified phenomena in the atmosphere of interest for both, for many reasons, uh, frankly, I think there's new science to be discovered. Uh, there's many, many times where something that looked almost magical turned out to be a new scientific effect. But uh, there's also uh, national security and air safety issues that have been discussed elsewhere that, of course, relate to these observations. And establishing, uh, uh, you know, with events that are, whether they're natural or whether they are, kind of, uh, need to be explained otherwise, is very much aligned with NASA's goals uh, that uh, ensure, of course, uh, you know, that we discover the unknown, but also ensures the safety of aircraft that, of course, are in that airspace that uh, these phenomena occur. Uh, this independent study will be led by astrophysicist David Sporgo who's the president of the Simons Foundation of, uh, in New York City and uh, has previously been the chair of astrophysics in the Department of Princeton and University of Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, Dan Evans, the assistant deputy associate uh, administrator for research, uh, is kind of, is the, the really kind of the wheels on the bus, kind of really making sure that we're interfacing uh, with this. Some people may ask why David, why Dan. So first of all, Dan, uh, with his tremendous experience, uh, both as a researcher but also as an able for research, his work that he did in the White House previously, I think, has tremendous uh, insight into kind of the cross interagency aspect that uh, relates to some of these discussions. And David Spurgle, I think, uh, to all of us in astrophysics, really understand that he's uh, one of the most trusted voices in so many questions, also a person who understands really the power of science and is willing and able to use that power of science kind of in areas. Uh, where I would say kind of fall under that what we would refer to as high risk, high impact kind of research, kind of areas that uh, that uh, many of the scientists may be a little bit more timid uh, uh, to walk in.